In this example, we're going to work our way through the Create Shape form. We'll be looking at a series of different vectors and how we can alter the settings within this form in order for us to create different shapes. So let's just go and close this down. And then we're going to open an existing file. Now from the Create Shape Guide project folder, I'm going to open the example file that we have in there. And you'll see that that's now opened up a file and we've got a set of fairly simple vectors that we've already created in the software. And we're going to use these vectors in order for us to demonstrate the Create Shape tool. Now before we go into the Create Shape tool, let's just tile our windows horizontally. That way I can see the 2D view at the top and I can see the 3D view at the bottom there. To access the Create Shape form, I need to go into the Modeling tab and the Create Shape icon is the first item within the Modeling Tools list. And if we just click in there, and that will open up the Create Shape form. And so the first thing we need to do in order for us to create a shape is to select a vector that we want to create a shape from. For example, I can select this circle vector here and then going into the form I can assign it a profile. I could give that circle a curved or a rounded profile. I could look at giving that an angular profile or we could choose from a flat profile. Once you've assigned a shape profile, you then have various other options within the form enabling you to control the shape in a little bit more detail. For example, we could look at applying an angle to our shape, we could add a base height to the shape, we have various options within the form to control the overall final heights of our shape. We're going to look at all of these throughout this tutorial. Finally, you choose how you want your component to combine with other components that you may already have in your part. So you can choose to add the component, subtract, merge high or merge low. And these are all explained in the modeling tutorials, more specifically in the component tree guide, which you'll find on the related videos for this tutorial in the tutorial browser. And then we just need to give it a name, so we're going to this name box here and you'll give it something to represent what it actually is that you're creating. For example, I could call this circle or wheel. Um, in this case, we're actually going to call this one dome. And so I just type the name in there and then I could go ahead and press apply. And so the software is going to take all these settings, round curve profile, 45 degree angle, final height is set to no limit, the combine mode of this is set to add, and we can see that we now have a yellow shape here in the 2D view, and then we have a 3D object here in the 3D view. And this is the shape that we've made based on all the settings that we've got here in the create shape form. And so if you were happy with that, you could go ahead and just close that down. And then you'll notice that we now have a component here in our component tree called Dome. And that's because we named the component Dome within the Create Shape form. I can select it. And with that selected, it's now highlighted the 2D uh, grayscale of that shape here in the 2D view. And it's also highlighted the component here in the 3D view. So I can select that shape to put it into transform mode, I could resize it, I can move it around, I can move it around in the 3D view as well if I wanted to. And I can come over to my component, and right click on the component, use the delete option here, that will remove it from my component tree. I no longer have a 2D grayscale representation of that component in the 2D view and I no longer have the actual 3D model of that component in the 3D view. So now let's have a look at some of the other options that we can use within the Create Shape form. I'm just going to put this back in the Z view and we'll go into the Create Shape form and so we're going to work through the same process whereby we're going to select a vector first and then we're going to look at applying a shape to it. So let's just select this circle vector again. I'm going to go to the round profile, 45 degrees, and I'm just going to press apply in this case. 
so it's created that component. Now if I wanted to create a new component, I can just simply use this option here to start a new component. You'll see now that it's deselected my uh, component. It's also deselected the vector we originally had selected. So it's basically saying that we can now select a new vector to create a shape from. So let's select this uh, rectangle vector here and we're going to apply an angular profile this time. Again, I'm just going to go to some of the standard settings, go ahead, press apply and I can see the result of those settings for this shape here in the 3D view. Again, if I wanted to start a new component, I simply press start new component. It will de deselect the component here. It will also deselect the vector as well. So I can now select a new vector. We'll select this shape. We'll go for a round profile and apply that. And so then we'd carry on working through the rest of the shapes, which we could then look at individually editing these shapes after we've used the create shape tool. So let's just close this down and then I'm actually going to select this grayscale here, hold down shift and select this shape, still holding down shift I'm going to select this shape here and I'm going to right mouse click and we're going to use the option to delete those. And so now we're going to show you how the different choices that we make within the form will react with different types of vector outlines. So let's go back into the create shape form. Now this time we're actually going to look at creating the same shape amongst various individual vectors. And so I'm just going to box select all of these vectors. So I'm just using the left mouse key and dragging that over the vectors so that they're now all highlighted. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to create one shape over five individual boundaries. Now this isn't the way that we normally work, but we're just doing this just to demonstrate the different shapes and the choices that we make within the form on different shaped vectors. So to start with, we're going to look at the curved profile. And we're going to look at the effects that we have when we adjust the angle. So let's just go with the settings that we've got here and apply those. So you can see the shapes that we've created there based on the round profile at 45 degrees. Now if I wanted to, I could alter the angle by simply just typing in a value. So I could apply 60 degree angle in there go ahead and apply that and you'll see it will update that and we can see the changes there in the 3D view. If I didn't want to be specific or I didn't really know what sort of angle I wanted to go for, I could just simply use the slider. And When I use the slider, it constantly updates in the 3D view, so I'm getting constant feedback. If I wanted to go into negative values, we can go into the negative values by going below zero and that will create a shape going down from the modeling plane. So let's just bring that back up. So now let's have a look at the effects the angle profile has on these shapes. So we can select the angle profile and you'll see that it automatically updates here in the 3D view. Let's type in a, a precise value in here, so we'll go to 30 in there, and I can press the space bar to enter that in. We can see the effects that these settings have on each of these different shapes and what we're seeing there in the 3D view. If I wanted to, I could up the angle here, and you can see again the effects of that. And it's also worth noting here that I can up the angle to 90 degrees, but that 90 degrees actually defaults to 45 as 90 degrees wouldn't actually exist it's not possible to have um, that shape as it would be it would have a vertical edge. Then we have the option here to create a flat shape so when I select that you'll notice that the angle option has greyed out here and that's because it has no effect on the profile as we use this tool uh, in order for us to create flat shapes. And the way that we give these flat shapes height is by adjusting the base height here, where I could simply type in a value. For instance, I could put a quarter of an inch in there. Or again, I could just look at using the slider to use that. And then if I hover over one of these shapes, you'll notice at the bottom highlighted there that it's telling me the current Z value, which matches that 
of the base height here. Now the base height doesn't just solely apply to the flat profile shape. We can actually use the base height in combination with the various profile shapes as well. So let's have a look at how to do that. I'm just going to click on this icon here in the centre and that's just going to set my base height to zero. Now let's just go into the curved profile up here. You'll see we've got the settings that we had last time. I'm just going to change the angle here. I'm just going to go with a curved profile of 40 degrees. Press apply and we'll see that that's been updated there. And so you can see that we've got these shapes based on the curved profile at 40 degrees. Now if we were to add in a base height, for instance if I typed in 125 or an eighth of an inch and then went ahead and pressed apply, you'll see that what it's done, it's just added that vertical height at this height of an eighth of an inch to my shapes. I still have the curved profile at 45 degrees, it's just added that vertical base height to the shape itself. So let's just reset that, put that back to zero. I'm actually going to change the angle here to 60 degrees. And we're just going to put that back in the Z view, press apply to apply those new settings there. Now let's have a look at each of these shapes. Now the height that a component reaches is actually based on the width of the vector or the shape that we're using to create the shape. And so when we use the Create Shape tool, all we're essentially doing is creating a profile with an angle and we're just stretching that about the width of the vector that you've got selected. So if we take a look at this circle, we can see we've got quite a big width there. And so we're just going to stretch that across and we're going to get quite a lot of height in there. Where something is more narrow, for instance the bottom of this uh, egg shape here, we're going to get less height. So the pattern is that uh, the more width you have, the more height that you have to stretch your profile across. And then the narrower the vector is, or the less width that you have, uh, the less height you're going to get. So let's just take a look at this blob shape as an example. So you can see we've got quite a bit of width at the top, we've got quite a bit of width at the bottom. Where it meets in the centre, the width is much narrower in comparison to the top and the bottom. So if we take a look in the 3D view, and if I hover my mouse over the 3D model, you can see that I'm displayed the Z values at the bottom. And so this area here that the cursor is currently over is currently displaying the Z height as around 0.36. Now if I bring my cursor down into the centre area where the width of the vector becomes narrower, you can see that my Z height has actually got lower. We, we are now presented with a Z value of around 0.18. And so it's quite an important concept to understand that when we have the final height set to no limit, uh, then it will create a shape based on the profile and angle that you've got set in your create shape form against the width of the vector that you're using to create the shape. But there are other ways in the form for us to actually control the heights that we're getting from our components. Or we could look at using the limit to height option, or we could look at scaling to an exact height. So let's just put this back in Z, and we're going to look at using the limit to height option. So the limit to height option basically takes the shape profile that you've got specified along with an angle and it will create a shape. But the moment that it reaches a height that you've got specified in here, it's going to flatten that off. So let's just have a look at a different value. So we'll type in a value here of 0 0.05, press apply in there and you'll see the changes have been made. And so what we can see here is we've got a shape that has a curved profile with a 60 degree angle. The moment that that component reached this height of 0 0.05, it's just flattened that off. And you can see that when I run my cursor over these 3D shapes, the Z value displayed at the bottom matches that of the height that we specified in this form here. 
Now if I wanted to I could increase uh, this height by using the slider and you can see the results we're constantly getting updates on the results there whereby we're getting this curved edge and it's still flattening off at the heights that we're specifying in here. Okay, so you can still see I um, can increase that height. We're still flattening um, areas off, but you'll notice that the T shape over here, and it actually isn't changing. And that's because no part of this T actually gets up to the value of 0 0.3075. And so what it's done is it's gone back to its standard round shape as defined at the top here. Whereas all of the other shapes, if we take a look at the Z values at the bottom, we can see that they're being flattened off at a height of 0 0.3075 and that's because we've got that value here that we're limiting the height to and they're still reaching those heights so they're still being flattened off. And so I can constantly change the height we limit our shapes to using the slider to a value that's actually larger than any of the shapes we have defined. And we'll see that none of them have been affected by the limit to height because it's not actually reaching the height for it to limit to. And this really is a nice way to control the height of our shapes, but it does affect our profile by adding that flat area on top of each of our objects. Another option we have within the form is to scale to an exact height. And so what this does, it enables us to scale to an exact height and the highest point of the object will be the height that we specify in this box here. So let's just put this back in Z. And we're just going to use the scale to an exact height option and I'm just going to type in a value of half an inch in there, press apply to make those changes. And so we've already worked out that the highest point of this component is going to be the peak of this dome and that's because it has the widest area. And so if I run my mouse over the centre of the circle, we can see that that is displaying a height of around 0.5. And that's because we've got it scaled to an exact height of 0.5. And then everything else is just going to scale out in proportion. So when we create shapes, we normally work with one vector at a time. So I'm just going to reset this. I'm just going to click into the white space so that all the vectors are deselected. I'm going to look at creating shapes one at a time. So I'm going to select this circle vector here. I'm going to go with a curve profile of 60 degrees. And then I'm going to go and scale that to an exact height of half an inch, which we can see there. And then we could go ahead and just apply that. Then we could go and start a new component. Now I'm going to select this rectangle. This time we're going to apply an angled profile, 60 degrees, and then we're going to go and scale that to an exact height of a quarter of an inch. And go ahead and apply that. Now you can see in the 3D view, if I just run my mouse over the top there, you can see that we're reaching a quarter of an inch at the top. Okay, so we've scaled that so the highest point is at a quarter of an inch. Let's put that back in Z and then we could go ahead and start a new component. Okay, so this time we're going to go and look at this blob shape that we've got here. And here we're going to go for a round profile. This time we're going to go with an angle of 40 degrees and then we're going to scale this to an exact height of 0.75 go ahead, press apply, and then we can take a look in the 3D view and we can see at the bottom there that the Z height is displaying as 0.75 at its highest point, which is roughly around here. Okay, so then we're going to go and create another shape. So I'm just going to select this vector here. And you'll notice that we've now lost that component that we had here, and that's because we didn't use the option to start a new component. Luckily, I can select the vector, and the software will remember the settings that we applied last time for this particular vector.
And so here I could just apply that. And we've got those settings there. Then I could go ahead and start a new component, in which case I'd then go and select this egg shape here. So with this shape, what I'd like to do is apply an angled profile here. I'm going to give that a relatively small angle of 30 degrees. I'm also going to look at applying a base height here. So I'm going to put in a base height of a quarter of an inch. And I'm also going to scale that to an exact height of a quarter of an inch. And then if I apply that, we can see the result of the angle at 30 degrees with a base height of a quarter of an inch. And we're scaling it also to a quarter of an inch. And we can see that there. So we can see the base height in the Z value at the bottom there. We can see that's at a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to the highest point at the top over here, which is at 0.5. And so what it does is when you apply a base height with a scaled height, it just combines the two heights. So the highest point will be at 0.5. Let's just put that back in Z. And then we'll go ahead and start a new component. And here we'll go and select the T shape. So I'm going to take that T. Now in this case, what I'd like to do is give that an angle profile. So I'm going to go for the angle profile and we're going to give that a 45 degree angle. Now I'd like to create a chamfered effect on this. That's why I'm using the angle at 45 degrees. I want to give it some base height. So I'm going to apply a vertical height to the base of the shape that we're going to create. And we're going to make that 0.1. Then what I'd like to do is I'd like to limit the overall final height uh, of the component to 0.1 also. So let's press apply and see what it looks like. So we can see in the 3D view the result of the various options and settings we've got in the form uh, in our shape that we've got here. We've got a nice chamfered flattened effect for our letter T. And so we can see the vertical height uh, coming up at point 0.1 and then we have a further height on top of that base height which is also at point 0.1 except this time we're actually going to flatten it off when it reaches the point 0.1 height. So we're going to go up point 0.1 for our base height and then we're going to go up to essentially point 0.2 because it combines the two heights together. And once it reaches that point 0.2, it's actually flattening that off. And so you can see we get a nice chamfered effect where we can see that angle coming in uh, at 45 degrees, but then it's being flattened off due to the limit to height option. So let's go ahead and close this form down. You can see the components I've created in the component tree have been added there. I can select them, I can select them in the 3D view or the 2D view. And if I wanted to, I can make further edits to them using the various model editing tools. Now I'm just going to take all of these components. I'm just going to select them all using the shift key right mouse click and we're actually just going to delete them. And we're going to look at one option that we didn't look at in the create shape form. So I'm going to take this circle here and then just using Alt, I'm just going to move that over to the right hand side so it's overlapping the rectangle. And then I'm going to take that rectangle and we're going to go back into the Create Shape form. Now here I'm just going to give that a curved profile uh, with an angle of 30 degrees. I'm going to set the final height to no limit. I'm just going to press Apply. We can see that there. I'm going to say Start New Component and then I'd like to select the circle and again we're going to go with the same settings as the rectangle so 30 degrees, no limit and then we could go ahead and press apply. Okay, So let's have to take a look at the components that we've got there. Okay, So we can see that the circle component that we've just created is adding on top of the rectangle and we know that it's adding on top because that's what it's currently set to so it's combine mode is adding with the components that are already in place. Now in a number of cases you may want to have a component look as though it's in front of another so in this case what I'd like to see in the 3D view is the circle appear as though it's in front of the rectangle 
So to do this, I'm going to set the combine mode of the component to merge so that it's blending in. But now I need to look at lifting the right hand side of the circle so that it appears in front of the rectangle. And the way that we can do this is by applying a tilt. And so the tilt will allow me to apply an angled plane or, or an angled base height, uh, which means that I can control the area that it lifts up. So let's see how this works. So in order to apply a tilt, I need to check the tilt option. And then what I need to do is I need to set my anchor point. Okay, so the first point that I select is the area that I want to tilt from. In this case, I want to tilt from the left to the right hand side. So I want the left side to be like my pivot point. So I'm just going to click here. You'll see we've got this dashed line appear. And then the next point I need to select is the area that I want to lift up or the direction that you want to tilt the component to which in this case is the right hand side as I want the circle to appear as though it's in front of the rectangle so I'm going to click here and then that will create the tilt so it will do that at a default of 10 degrees and we can see that that component has lifted the right hand side up has tilted it up by 10 degrees now that's a little bit too much uh, in this case so I could look at reducing that down to say 2.6 and that 2.6 lift on the right hand side the tilt that we've added in there is just enough to make it appear as though this shape is now in front of that rectangle an idea would be to use the tilt option with a flat profile and that would enable you to make a wedge shape as some applications this may be what you actually want to do so let's just close the form down and so we can see we've got our components in the component tree we've got our grayscales in the 2D view and the actual 3D model in the 3D view now it's important to note that once we've created components they have no relation to the vectors that they were made from so if I take this component put it into transform mode and I can move that out the way and you'll see that I've dragged the component out but the vector stays in the same place and the only time that there is a connection between your vector and your shape is when you're actually setting up a shape in the form after that there is actually no connection between the shape and the vector there is however one thing that the vector will remember and that's the parameters that we used in the create shape form so if we go back into the create shape form and if I select a vector you'll see that the form will update to the settings that we use last for this particular vector so we can see we use a curve profile 30 degrees no limit with a tilt of 2.6 I can select another vector and you'll see the form will update again and then another vector again all the different settings are being remembered and this also works if you copied a shape from one session of Aspire to another. And so that completes this tutorial on how to create shapes using the Create Shape tool.